Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to be talking about the social determinants of health. In this video, we are going to be exploring the social determinants of health, including their forms and the roles they play in shaping healthcare outcomes. Firstly, what are social determinants of health? The World Health Organization defines social determinants of health as the condition in which people are born, grow, work, live, and age, and the wider set of forces and systems shaping the conditions of daily life. Social determinants of health are an extensive range of factors that exist throughout all aspects of society. However, they are separate from medical care or a person's individual lifestyle choices. A study cited by the National Academy of Medicine found that medical care itself only accounted for 10 to 20 percent of the contributors to people's health outcomes. By contrast, the many social determinants of health play a much bigger role in influencing a person's health, making up to 80 to 90 percent of the contributing factors. Consequently, social determinants of health fall into five broad groups, which are healthcare, economic stability, education, neighborhood, social and community life. Let's look into these broad groups in greater details. Firstly, healthcare. This group encompasses a person's access to healthcare and its quality. Factors include access to primary healthcare, health insurance coverage, and health literacy. Around 1 in 10 people in the United States are living without health insurance. This means they may not have a primary healthcare professional. They may also not have the money to make vital purchases for their health, such as medications or tests, and the quality of care they deserve. Secondly, economic stability. This refers to the link between a person's finances and their health. Examples of these factors are poverty, employment, food security, and housing stability. Economic stability is vital to affording lifestyle choices and paying for quality medical care that keeps people healthy. A well-paying steady job is critical for food security and housing stability. However, savings are essential for managing chronic conditions or emergencies. Thirdly, we have education. This category focuses on connection between a person's access to education and its quality and their health. Examples include secondary education, higher education, language, and literacy. Whether a child or adolescent can access quality education throughout their development can determine their future health conditions. Early childhood education is essential for social and mental development, and good quality high school education can open new doors to further education and employment opportunities. Fourthly, we have neighborhood. This group considers a person's housing and environment and the role they play in the person's health. Factors include quality of housing, transportation, access to healthy foods, water quality, crime and violence rates. A person's neighborhood and living conditions can directly impact their health and safety. Many individuals worldwide live in areas with elevated rates of violent crimes, high levels of environmental pollution, unsafe air and drinking water. However, Marginalized racial and ethnic groups, as well as people from low-income households, are more likely to live in places that carry these health risks. The fifth group is social and community life. This group revolves around the way a person lives, works, play, and learn, and how this relates to the person's health. Factors include civic participation, discrimination, incarceration, and conditions within a workplace. Interactions between individuals and their family members and co-workers can affect their health. For example, workplace conditions and discrimination can have an impact on people's mood and self-esteem. Therefore, fostering positive relationships at home, at work, or in a person's community can improve public well-being. Meanwhile, the factors in each group are interwoven and often related to each other. There has been increased recognition that improving health and achieving health equity will require approaches that address social, economic, and environmental factors that influence health. 
Although clinical medicine and healthcare is essential to health, it is a relatively weak health determinant. Research shows that health outcomes are driven by an array of factors including underlying genetics, health behavior, social and environmental factors, and health care. Studies suggest that health behaviors such as smoking, diet and exercise, in addition to social and economic factors, are the primary drivers of health outcomes and that social and economic factors can shape individuals' health behaviors. For example, children born to parents who have not completed high school are more likely to live in an environment that poses barriers to health such as lack of safety, exposed garbage and substandard housing. They also are less likely to have access to sidewalks, parks or playgrounds, recreational center or a library. Furthermore, evidence shows that stress negatively affects health across a lifespan and that environmental factors may have multi-generational impacts. Therefore, addressing social determinants of health is not only important for addressing overall health but also for reducing the health disparities that are often rooted in social and economic disadvantages. In summary, the conditions in which people are born and in which they live their lives have a profound effect on their health. These factors influence the opportunities a person has to eat a nutritious diet, have a good education, live and work in a toxin-free environment, access health care, and more. Where a person is born, lives, goes to school, and works is what public health experts refer to as social determinants of health. Subscribe to this channel for more of our public health lecture series, like this video if it was valuable, and leave your comments and questions below.